One of the subjects that we've danced around from the start of this episode that a lot of nice guys and gals struggle with is hiding their sexual desire. And in large part, that's due to shame. So how does shame show up for nice guys and gals and how does it keep them from what they want? This is true for most nice guys. It's been true for me. Uh, I, I grew up, well, you can't grow up in this world without absorbing a lot of toxic sexual messages. Uh, yes. In America, an American, it, 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 America was founded by uh, Puritans, by, by religious nutcases that couldn't get along with their neighbors in Europe, so they came to America um, and then wanted to do it their way. And, and so in America, we're bombarded with sexual stimuli, you know, media, movies, television, ads, but, but still told, you're bad. For, sex is bad. You know, I grew up in a fundamental Christian church that says, you know, sex is dirty, sinful, and ugly. Save it for the person you love. And, you know, just you think, okay, now that, I've, now that I'm married, right, you cross that line, now sex is going to be great and it's going to work good. Um, and, you know, I, I grew up thinking if I'd been, you know, if I looked at a woman's breast and had a sexual thought, I was going to hell for all eternity. That was, those were the messages. I, so, you know, that had to have an impact. On, on my sexuality. Now, here's the, here's the deal. I, I ask people a lot of times in my workshops, think of your first sexual experience. What is your first sexual memory? Now, that, that, that might be discovering you have an erection at three years old. Uh, maybe it's, you know, five or six playing with the, the neighbor and showing you yours and they show you theirs. Maybe it was your first kiss. Maybe it was your first wet dream. Maybe it was being violated or molested by a, a family member or a neighbor. Um, maybe, you know, the, it, whatever it comes to mind as your first sexual memory, first sexual thing that happened to you. And then I ask people, what was the context? What was the situation? Was it in the open? What was it, you know, in broad daylight where people could see it? Was it uh, celebrated? Uh, was, was it applauded? You know, could, could you go to your parents and say, Mom, Dad, I had my first wet dream. And they're going, that is fantastic. Let's go get pizza. You know, what, what, was it handled that way? Or was, was it, or was it in the dark? Did it lack information? Was it hidden? Was it secretive? Was it shameful? Was it, oh, no, I'm bad. Oh, no, I can't be found out. Oh, no, I can't tell anybody about it. And everybody I've ever talked to, yes, that was everybody's first sexual experience. It was not, hey, let's celebrate this. This is such a positive development in our young life. And that, that didn't happen. It doesn't happen. And so that means for every human being, uh, uh, let's just say 99.9% .9 of all human beings, their earliest sexual experience and experiences were wrapped in shame, wrapped in secrecy, wrapped in guilt, wrapped in darkness, wrapped in, oh, no, I'm bad, okay? And then we then grow up, go through adolescence, come into adulthood, and that stuff doesn't just drop. So sex gets crosswired. It becomes associated with shame, you know, I'm bad. Now, so that might lead to sexual addiction. Uh, it, it could lead to sexual acting out. It could lead to sexual repression. Uh, it, it can lead to, you know, sexually abusing others. Uh, it could lead to being attracted to people that have abuse issues. I mean, it, it manifests in so many ways, but rarely does it manifest in truly conscious, intimate, consensual, isn't this great we're having sex, sex. It, it usually, it gets tainted in, in some way or another. And that's true for everybody. So what do we do with that? I, you know, for me, what my journey, I, I, I my, my very first, you know, uh, resource for, for, for working on me as a nice guy was a 12 step group for sex addicts. Cause my wife kept saying, you're a sex addict, you know, uh, why? Because I want to have sex with you. That makes me a sex addict. And just cause you don't want to have sex, you know, why does that make me, but anyway, I went and I, I quickly found out I was not a sex addict, but it was a group of all guys who really had some, you know, some hardcore stuff going on. So I'd go and I would just share anything that, you know, I'd never shared with anybody. Just, you know, this dark thought or this impulse or this thing I did and never, never told. I just started revealing me in a safe place and it felt liberating. It felt damn good. And then I got a therapist and soon after that joined a men's group that was kind of built around sexual shame. And for four or five years, 
everything about my sexuality, I just I put it out there and let it be in the spotlight and let it be seen by others. And so in No More Mr. Nice Guy, I say, don't try to do this alone. Go get safe people to reveal yourself to. Find people that you can reveal your darkest self, the part of you that you don't want to reveal, and find out you're not alone, kind of like I was saying, guys get in a group or workshop, find out they're not alone, but also get more accurate information and feedback. So, so you think, oh, I have these sexual thoughts or these sexual impulses, that must make me bad. But what if you're with a therapist or a coach or in a men's group, and they're all going, no, actually, that sounds really pretty normal. That doesn't sound like you're a bad person in any kind of way. And you can start, me? you mean this thing I've been thinking is bad about me is normal? Or this thing that happened to me that I never told anybody about before, that wasn't my fault or I'm not bad because that, ha no, that wasn't your fault. You're not bad because that happened to and And it's not always quite that simple, but it's a good start at it. And if we can just start opening up and being transparent about it. And like, like I said, my wife and I are in a place right now since doing the, the plant medicine ceremonies. Our intention is if we have a fear or shame, and, and most, for most of us, that's around sex. If she and I have a fear or shame, we're going to tell each other about it and see if we can help each other lean into it, to go towards it, to, to, to clean it out of, of our psyche and consciousness. So we do need safe people. So in this case, my wife is that kind of safe person. But I also have a coach. I have a men's program. I have guys that know everything about me. So I keep creating these safe places to keep revealing me, when, especially the stuff I don't want to reveal. You know, putting the stuff out there that I'd rather keep in. And that's how you release the shame. And that's how you free yourself up. And that's how your sexual energy then begin, begins to be able to just flow and just be a part of you. And it makes you amazingly attractive if you're, either, if you're not repressing your sexual energy and if you're not channeling it through, through some kind of addiction or, or, or anything like that. But you're just you. You're just you as a sexual being. That's amazingly attractive. And, and, and it takes work.